in section 3.9, we will turn our attention to one of the more important applications of the derivative called related rates. Here's the idea. If we pump air into a balloon, then both the radius and the volume of the balloon are increasing, and their rates of increase are related, right? The faster the volume is increasing, the faster the radius is increasing. But it's easier to measure the rate of increase of the volume than of the radius. For example, we could put the balloon into water, and as we pump air into the balloon, watch the water level rise. In related rates problems, the idea is to compute the rate of change of one quantity in terms of the rate of change of another quantity. For example, for our balloon, we can find the rate of change of the volume in terms of the rate of change of the radius. Remember that one of the most important interpretations of the derivative is as an instantaneous rate of change. So when we talk about the rate of change of the volume, we mean the derivative of the volume, v prime of t or dv dt, since our volume is changing over time as we put more and more air into our balloon. Similarly, the rate of change of the radius is the derivative of the radius, r prime of t or dr dt, which is also changing over time. So in related rates problems, we want to relate different rates. That is, to find a relationship between derivatives, such as the derivative of the volume and the derivative of the radius of our balloon. We need to find an equation that relates the quantities and then use the chain rule to differentiate both sides with respect to time. For our balloon, we can use the formula volume equals 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. If we want to emphasize that the volume and radius are changing with respect to time, our formula can be written v of t equals 4 thirds pi times r of t cubed. Note that since these are functions in their own right, they're functions of time, then we must use the chain rule to differentiate. For example, to compute the derivative of r cubed, we think of it as a function r of t raised to the third power, and our derivative will be 3 times r of t squared times the derivative of that inside function, the dr dt. That's enough preliminaries. Let's get to an example. A spherical balloon is inflated with gas at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing? at the instant when the radius is 2 feet. Let's read the problem again to determine what information we've been given and what we're trying to find. A spherical balloon is inflated with gas at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing at the instant when the radius is 2 feet? First, we are being given that the balloon is being inflated at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. This tells us the rate of change of the volume of the balloon. So, we are given that dv dt equals 10. We want to know how fast the radius of the balloon is changing, so we want to find the rate of change of the radius dr dt. And we want to know this rate of change when the radius is 2 feet. So when r equals 2. Now lastly we need a relationship between our variables, a relationship between the volume and the radius. We'll use our formula for the volume of a sphere, v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Or to remind ourselves that these are functions of time, v of t equals 4 thirds pi times r of t cubed. We have our relationship and we want to get some derivatives into the mix. So let's differentiate both sides of our equation. On the left, the derivative of v is dv dt. On the right, the constant 4 thirds pi will tag along 
and then we must use the chain rule to take the derivative of r of t cubed. So we get 3 times r of t squared times the derivative of the inside dr dt. Now that we've taken our derivative, we can plug in the information we were given in the problem. Recall, we were given that dv dt equals 10, and we want dr dt when r equals 2. So let's plug in dv dt equals 10 and r equals 2. Finally, we'll solve for dr dt and see that dr dt is 10 divided by 16 pi or 5 divided by 8 pi. So our answer is that the radius is increasing at the rate of 5 over 8 pi feet per minute. Before we leave this example, let's talk through the process one more time. We determined what information we were given and what we wanted to find. We found a relationship between our variables. We differentiated both sides of our relationship, plugged in the information we'd been given, and solved for the missing rate. Let's do one more example. The height of a triangle is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute while the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 squared centimeters per minute. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the height is 12 centimeters and the area is 84 square centimeters? Let's read the problem again to determine what information we've been given and what rate we're trying to find. The height of a triangle is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute while the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 square centimeters per minute. At what rate is the base of the triangle changing when the height is 12 centimeters and the area is 84 square centimeters? So we are told that the height of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute, so we are given that dh dt equals 2.5. And we are told that the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 3 square centimeters per minute, so we're given that dA dt equals 3. We are asked at what rate is the base of the triangle changing, so we want to find dB dt, and we want it when the height equals 12 centimeters and the area equals 84 square centimeters, so when h equals 12 and a equals 84. We need a relationship between our variables, so we'll use the formula a equals 1 half base times height, or to emphasize that the area, base, and height are all changing over time, we can write our formula as a of t equals 1 half times b of t times h of t. Let's get derivatives into the mix. So, we want to differentiate our formula. On the left, the derivative of the area is dA dt. On the right, first note that the constant 1 half will tag along. To compute the derivative of b times h, we must use the product rule. So, we have b times the derivative of h plus h times the derivative of b. Since we've taken our derivative, it's time to see what information we were given and what we want to find. We were given that dH dt is 2.5 and, and dA dt is 3. We want dB dt when h equals 12 and a equals 84. So let's plug in for dH dt, dA dt, and the height. We want to solve for dB dt but we've run into a problem. We don't know the value of b. We need to find b when h equals 12 and a equals 84. So let's go back to our relationship. a equals 1 half base times height. We can plug in a equals 84 and h equals 12 to solve for b. And we see that b equals 12. Let's plug that into our equation. All that remains now is to solve for dB dt. So we can multiply both sides by 2 
and note that 12 times 2 and a half equals 30. Then a little algebra yields that dBdt equals negative 2. Hmm, we got a negative answer. Is that okay? Yes, it is. If our rate of change is negative, that simply means that the quantity is decreasing. So our final answer here is that the base of the triangle is decreasing at a rate of 2 centimeters per minute. Great. Finally, here are a few suggestions for solving related rates problems. First, sketch a figure if helpful. Secondly, identify all relevant variables, including those whose rates are given and those whose rates are to be found. Next, express those rates as derivatives. Find an equation relating your variables. Use the chain rule to take the derivative of the equation. Substitute in all given variables. Now note that this substitution happens after you take the derivative. That's very important. Finally, solve for the derivative that will give the unknown rate. Great. So this is all for our introduction into related rates. We'll have lots more examples to work through in class, and I look forward to seeing you there.